What about the baby over the veranda? Yeah, I was in the room that day. Yeah. Okay. Well, right. what happened there? Right. So I'll, I'll tell you as it is, James, because it's like that's the thing of your, theme of your podcast, right? So that was a major misjudgment, but he was not in a place at the time to make a right judgment. So we were in Berlin. We we're in the hotel suite. And by the way, this baby just appeared. If I'm completely honest with you, I was in London with him. We were shopping. I don't know where we were. We were in Hamleys. That's where we were. And he said to me, can you get that and that for the baby? I don't really think, I think I thought he meant Paris, his youngest daughter. I get back to the hotel room. He's got a baby in his arms. Said, where that baby come from, mate? Said, my baby. Okay. I mean, I got my early 20s. I didn't ask too many questions because you're gone. I mean, that's it. It gets paranoid, you know? And I, I, I know he needed me. He needed someone he could trust in his life. And I saw what happened with Yuri when Yuri was tough and he just shut him out. And he would turn his calls and then get the friendship, get back in order again. So around Harry, around Hamley, and I thought it's a bit strange. He's mentioned this baby, and I said to my rehearsal wife, "You know, he's got about his baby all the time. You know, and this baby's come out of nowhere." And then the next, the next public appearance was him to receive a Bambi Award in Berlin, and we're in the living room, and he's got a doctor there who was a problem. A doctor is a serious issue, and whatever the hell he gave Mike, Mike was hyper, some kind of amphetamine. I don't know. He was hyper. You, you, you'll see a scene in the Martin Bashir documentary where Michael's leg shaking and he's like, uh, completely crazy. And he was hyper because the doctor made him like that on purpose because it gave him a, a happy feeling or something. Erratic is probably the word. And he first of all, he took um, Prince, the oldest his son, to the balcony. We had massive fans there. It was unbelievable. And they'd go mad for Prince. Then he showed Paris and they were chanting, we want to see the baby, baby, baby. And he didn't think anything of it. He just grabbed the baby and he put the baby over, up to the balcony, came back in, and um, we didn't really sit there. But let me tell you the truth about the shot. That's famous, right? If you go to that hotel, you'll see you've got the balcony, then you have a ledge. This is a proper like five, six star hotel in Berlin, a ledge. He, he couldn't drop that baby. If he dropped that baby, he wouldn't have gone anywhere. There's a ledge. I'm not justifying it by any means, but that baby wouldn't have fell to its death or anything like that. It was there was like a ledge underneath if you go and visit that hotel. He came in, he was under the influence of something, James. Okay, that's what I'm getting at. He came in. My my main concern really was with Mike less than my mate. Less can we get him away from this doctor? Because he's got an award show to go to and look at him. You know, he's shaking and erratic. So Mark took him away. We got the doctor out of the way. And then media started arriving outside the hotel. I'm thinking, wow. And Michael's like, wow, this is great. They're so popular. And uh because of the Bambi Award I'm going to get tonight. Oh, it's great. And it grew and it grew. All these satellite dishes, all these big vans, Sky, Sky News, Fox News. And then the, the presence of people, it was like thousands of people outside. Then I get a phone call from America. So we had German TV on and German TV was throwing, Michael Jackson shows his children off to the world. And that's it. That's all the narrative was. That, there was no controversy. So America calls says, where's Mr. Jackson? I said, oh, he's just with Mark Lester his best mate, watching a movie. He said, tell Mr. Jackson not to watch TV. He might not be able to go to the Bambi Awards tonight. He's everywhere all over. And I said, well, what's going on? And his assistant, I said, uh, they're saying that he's put his child at danger, he dangled him over the balcony. And I was like, oh, he's there. I said, no, he's, the doctor's here. And he's basically not right, you know, what's been given to him, in my opinion. And that's not his attention at all. And he, that balcony, and I saw the picture. I said, no, they've manipulated that angle. They're only showing one side of it. And uh, anyway, yeah, we, we, no one wanted to tell Michael. So me and Mark sat him down and said, listen, the world's took it. Germany are saying you're showing, showing you the kids, but the world's take it as that like you uh, put your neglect in your, your child. They, they forgot, they didn't show the image of Prince and Paris being shown. They just went for the baby, they, they, their own narrative. And um, they said, baby, you know, Michael dangled the baby. Anyway, we had German authorities turn up, welfare officers turn up at the hotel. And he was, he just locked himself in a bedroom and just cried. He just couldn't believe it, you know, just like, but it was the doctor's fault. That was the truth. Michael was not thinking, do you know, when we got back to London, so we went from there and we had to get a connecting flight from, from um, London. We were driving the back of the car and he was thinking about the Berlin incident and, and the blacked out car. So no one could see him, but he could see everyone else. And you could see dads at parks, chucking their kids up in the air, catching them. He says, you know what, Matt, if I did that, cause I'm Michael Jackson, I would be killed, crucified by the world's media, but they, everyone else can get away with it.